Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we'll look at how to find RNS configurations when priority group number four is coming forward on your molecule. You can find this entire video series along with my stereochemistry practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website LeiaForSci.com slash chirality. In the last video, I showed you the four-step method for finding RNS configurations. Step one, prioritize your groups. Step two, ensure number four is in the back. Step three, cross out number four. And step four, trace an arc from one to two to three. If the top of your arc is going clockwise or towards the right, you have an arc configuration. And if the top of your arc is going towards the left or counterclockwise, you have an S configuration. That is the simple way to approach it. But now what do you do if you have a molecule that doesn't have group number four in the back? What do you do if group number four is coming forward? Notice that when I prioritize this molecule, I have one, two, three, and four, so that group number four is coming out of the page straight at me. The goal with prioritizing is to rank the top three substituents when they're facing forward with number four out of the way because we're not considering that. Now your professors may tell you to redraw the molecule or to build a model kit and then visualize it that way, but honestly, that's a waste of time. Instead, what I want you to do is imagine that you're presenting this molecule to someone and you're looking at them face to face. And to help you understand this, I'll share a quick story. I was the ACFL in my military unit, which means I helped lead the warm-ups and the workouts. So here I am standing in front of an entire group of people. You're looking at the back of me since I'm facing them, so you can see my hair instead of my face. To start the workout, I said, take your right hand and stretch it above your head. And to demonstrate, I lifted my right hand, stretching it above my head, expecting them to follow. Now what do you think happened? About half of the people were watching me do the demonstration. And since they were facing me, my right hand matched up to their left hand, and they all raised that left hand to stretch. But the other half of the group heard me say right hand, and so they raised their right hands, which matched up to my left hand. And what we had was a whole lot of confusion with half the people stretching their right hand and half the people stretching their left hands. The first thing I want you to understand is how this happened. When you're standing face to face with another person, your right side matches their left side and their left side matches your right side. If you're holding something up to them, what's facing you is facing away from them and what is facing them is facing away from you. Now, how does this relate to a chiral molecule? Let's take a look. Here I have a model kit, which is great for learning stereochemistry. You can pick one up on Amazon through layforsci.com slash kit and I'll get a small commission. Notice the carbon here is tetrahedral and has four unique substituents. Let's set it up so that we're prioritizing the color over white. White will be number four and we'll position that to the back. And I have the colors facing forward so you can trace the path from one to two to three. That's how it's supposed to be, right? But wait, what about me? When I turn, I see number four facing forward while you see it facing back. And that's how we have to visualize when you have priority number four in the front. So when I show it to you, I have to imagine that even though to me it's forward, to you it's back, to you it's correct. Now let's try this. We'll prioritize from blue to green to red. Trace of half, blue to green to red, what do you see? Well, you probably see this counterclockwise, but I see it clockwise. Blue to green to red, that's clockwise, but you're seeing it counterclockwise. If I have number four facing forward, which I have, and one to two to three is clockwise, I have to think I'm showing it to you, you're seeing it backwards, and so I have to turn clockwise counterclockwise. I switched it up and now blue to green to red is in the opposite direction. I am seeing this counterclockwise, you are seeing it clockwise. So I have to think number four is facing forward, to you it's facing back. Blue to green to red to me is counterclockwise, therefore to you the correct way it's clockwise. 
Let's take this back to our example. If I have a molecule where number four is coming forward, I will imagine that I am teaching you and I am showing you this molecule. And in holding this up in front of you, I see number four coming forward to me, but you see number four towards the back the way you're supposed to see it. If I'm trying to demonstrate if it's RNS, I will still cancel out number four and trace the path from one to two to three, which appears to be S, but because you are seeing it backwards, I have to remember that if I see it counterclockwise and S, you are seeing the same exact molecule with number four towards the back going clockwise as R. If you understand what I did, it becomes very simple. So anytime you see a molecule where number four is coming forward, simply cross it out, trace the path from one to two to three, and if it appears to go towards the right, clockwise R, reverse it so that you get counterclockwise S. And if you cross out number four, and then tracing an arc from one to two to three appears to go counterclockwise S, you simply switch it so that it's now clockwise and R. So in review, if number four is forward, rank the same way as you did for a standard molecule, trace an arc from one to two to three and see if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. And then if it's R, turn it into S. And if it's S, turn it into R because number four forward means that you're showing it to someone else, they see it backwards and they see it in reverse. And this doesn't work just on a clean molecule like what we've shown here. Let's take something more complex to analyze. What if you're asked to find the RNS configurations for every chiral carbon on this molecule? I see a lot of CH2s in the ring. I see this carbon here that has two methyl groups. That means it does not have four unique substituents. It is achiral. And then I see this one over here, which is chiral. It has a hydrogen. It has an OH. And then going around the ring, I have an asymmetric pathway because going down, I have a CH2 and then carbon hitting the methyl groups. On the other side, I have CH2, then just another CH2, just another CH2. There is no symmetry on this molecule, making it chiral. In ranking my substituents, I know that hydrogen is always going to be number four. Oxygen will outrank carbon, giving me a number one. And then for the carbons, we have to look deeper and determine that the lower carbon is number two and the upper carbon is number three. If you're not comfortable with this, make sure you see video five that tells you how to deal with substituents that have the same atom but a difference down the line. But for now, we have our priorities. We notice number four is forward. So we cross it out, trace an arc from one to two to three that appears to be R. But because number four is forward, we simply switch it and it becomes S. And this is an S configuration. But this only works when group number four is coming forward rather than back. Now what do you do if group number four is in the plane of the page? Do you treat it as a number four back or do you treat it as a number four forward? And the answer is neither. And this is exactly what we'll cover in the next video. Remember, you can find this entire series along with my stereochemistry practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website, layaforsci.com slash chirality. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.